Let's now bring in Jim Jackson and Keith Jones on the crossover. Of course, they were on the call for tonight's game. As we sit here and we all talk about it, I think I kind of have to ask you guys the same question. How do you walk away feeling after this game? Because there was about, I want to say, 37 minutes of that game that was really starting to infuriate fans. And then you have to give credit where it's due also, guys. Yeah, it, it is a game where there's there's lots of good, there's lots of bad. I, I still think it's Scott Hartnell just wasn't quite good enough banging the drum to, to start the <laughs> Just a little more energy, Scott, and maybe this is a win instead of a loss. No, I mean, really, I mean, the, the comeback was great. Uh, I, I think the Flyers, even through all the bad last year, had some games, Jonesy, where they show they have the spirit. They do come back. Um, and you want to have that certainly as part of your repertoire. Uh, but you don't want to put yourself in that position either. And they did lots of things you don't want to see to get in that position. And it's going to need cleaning up. But again, this is very much a work in progress. You've got a lot of new parts. And you're playing games of meaning for the first time. So it's going to take a little while. Yeah, and a lot of those new parts picked up points they in the first game, too, including the assist by Yandel, the goal by Atkinson, and the assist by Ellis. Broussard uh, as well. And Broussard as well. Yeah. So it, it, that was a real positive to take out of this game. The comeback is obviously a big positive. Overtime, all the fans all standing for the entire overtime. That was fun to see again. Uh, Vancouver had them a little nervous because they pretty much held onto the puck for the entire overtime session and then deserved to win the game in the shootout just based upon how well they bounced back after the Flyers had tied things up. So there's a lot to take out of this game. I think most importantly from the Flyers' perspective is they came from behind. They had some of their top guys pick up big goals in the game, and that should give them some confidence going into Monday night's game against the Kraken. Yeah, Keith Yandel actually recorded his 500th career assist in this game tonight. Uh, we have to talk about Carter. There was obviously a lot of discussion about Carter throughout tonight's game and his struggles specifically in the second period. Uh, how do you feel about Carter after this game, and did his play in overtime kind of quell some of the concerns that may have been arising among, you know, Flyers fans and, and us, to be quite frank. Well, I mean, the two goals uh, that uh, he won't be happy with were also weird goals because of the bounces and such, but he, he's not going to like those for a reason. You just got to be a little bit more solid. I think you got to be on the post for the, the, the first one, the, the Pedersen goal, and then the other one, you know, just, just – hang with it be, be you don't like leaky goals you don't like goals where the puck's kind of just bouncing around and I will say they really need to get Rasmus in because they spent the entire training camp getting the three pairs uh, acclimated and they all really seem to be making strides in that area and then Rasmus gets hurt in the final preseason game so if he's back Monday and you have the three pairs set uh, I think uh, Elaine will be a happy man and we'll get to see how that chemistry is developed for not just Provorov and Ellis but also the other two pairs. Any hint of a different style from last year that you can see in game one a different way that they're going to play a different type of way out of the zone anything like that that you saw with the new lineup 
Well, the one thing I was really looking for, Al, was the penalty kill to yeah. be improved, and that was not an area of strength in this game. So it's a work in progress. I do think some of the power play goals that Vancouver scored were uh, based upon some fortunate bounces as well in and around the feet of Hart and off the backboard. So hard to really measure that, but that is an area that I think the Flyers can improve their record immensely if they can clean up the penalty kill, and that's going to be a big challenge for them as uh, we move forward in the season. All right, Jim Jackson, Keith Jones, thank you so much for joining us here on the crossover and as always providing all of your incomparable insight on the game. <laughs> thank you, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Starting off the season with a compliment, guys. It's all down to you guys. Here. All right, let's move on to our Colonial Nissan game changer. We talked about it off air, especially we wanted to see more from some of the top line guys, and it was those players who came through at the end of this game to help the Flyers salvage a point out of this one. But the thing that I think is interesting in the sequence, guys, when I talk to the players before the season, they talk about these moments where you get a power play, you get a goal, you get a big hit, the fans react, it gets you buzzing, it gives you momentum. How much do you think being in this building full of Flyers fans tonight helped propel them in these moments? Well, you don't, you didn't see the celebrations like that last year. And, and to have the crowd all standing up, cheering, uh, it just gives you goosebumps. And, and just two great plays, too. You win that face-off. Couturier winning that face-off is so huge. That play doesn't happen without that. And then Drew saying, hey, behind the, behind the back, off the boards, you can see him waving his stick. And then he does that one-timer from a terrible angle uh, off the goalie's back. How many times tonight did the boards come into play? And it's your home ice, so you know the boards a little bit, Scotty, and that was just, just absolutely, you could have put an X there. This is where it has to go, and Drew knew it. Yeah, 15 times you're going to do that in practice. It yeah. maybe works once. They did it in the game. So one of your stars of the game are the, the boards, boards in yes. tonight's game. Or the boards they in get tonight's every, game. All night long. I want to talk about another uh, standout in tonight's game. It was not a first liner, second liner. in Cam Atkinson showed some real flashes of just how much he can contribute to this team. What was the most impressive part of Cam's night for you, Scott? Uh, it penalty kill. I think he added a little juice back there. Uh, he sprung Thompson on that uh, kind of half breakaway. Uh, and then his goal, too. He, he has a knack for that net. Uh, strong stick. Was able to get that thing far side on Demko. So just, just his all-around game. When he's out there buzzing, you can tell. And, and his line mates feed off that. The bench feeds off that. And a uh, big reason why they picked him up. His yeah. grandma on the Jambo on the yeah. Jamboni as well. His grandma has made her name, made her whole life there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the whole family flew out from like 50 people for tonight's day. And well, having that kind, of, that kind of an energy guy is is so useful, and it feeds into everybody when you have somebody like that. I mean, you played against it for so long, and you see what he can do at key moments. Yeah, we'll have more on Cam Atkinson coming up here in Flyers post game live, presented by Cure Auto Insurance. We will also hear from Elaine Vigneault after this game. I am very interested to hear what he has to say after this one. We will be right back after this break.